Until now, this story has been top secret. Top Secret, the thrilling NBC presentation starring gorgeous Ilona Massey as the Baroness Karen Gazer in transcribed dramas of international intrigue and espionage before and during World War II. Assignment 7, Midnight for Danger. When I began Assignment 7, I did not know that a watch, a thick, rather ordinary, quite cheap Swiss watch, could hold the secret not only of time, but of death. It is an axiom of spies that the best place to hide a needle is not in a haystack but in a needle shop. In the city of Basel in Switzerland, a country famous for its watches, the equivalent of a needle shop is a clock store. A quaint, rather ordinary, quite cheap clock store. Could I be waited on, please? Uh, Fräulein, excuse me. I did not hear you come in. I'm interested in a watch in your window. Certainly, Fräulein. Which one? That one. Ah, that is a beauty. Fräulein has excellent taste. No, no. The one beside it. This one? Yes. But, Fräulein, this is a man's watch. I am aware of that. And may I ask why you fancy this particular watch? Because of the time it tells. Which is? Exactly correct. Where? New York City. But it is exactly one o'clock. So at last you have come. Yes. Who are you? I'm the Baroness Karen Gazer, formerly of Vienna. Uh, my name is Jura, Eric Jura. Uh, before we talk, can we get this signal business straight? That white clock will always be in my window. Yes. When it is set at five o'clock, you may come in. Twelve o'clock means danger. Break contact. Five o'clock, all clear. Twelve o'clock, danger. And break contact. If I break contact with you, is there anyone else I can call? Yes, a man named Paul Hammerlein. Yes. He's young, strong, speaks perfect German. Oh. I'll write down the telephone number. Oh, never write anything down. Oh. Tell it to me. 2007. Again, please. 2007. Oh, Fraulein, for weeks now I have been waiting for... Wait, for... Uh, can you recommend a safe place for me to stay? The hotel is too public. At the house of my cousin. Her name is Meltzner. Meltzner. 73 Missionstrasse. Can she be trusted? Yes, all she cares about is pig's knuckles and waltzes. Does she know about you? She knows nothing about anything except cooking. And she has a room to rent. You may go there from here. I will say that you are a customer on a vacation and that you inquired about a room. Good. Now about Operation Dust. What, what is villain? Not so loud, Fräulein, please. Uh, huh. Aren't we alone? We are alone, but the very walls have ears. Herr Jura, a spy without courage is useless. Fräulein, I am no longer young. I have arthritis, my hearing is bad. Spying is for men who are strong. After all, your country is at war with Germany. What you do, you do for patriotism. I am tired, I am sick. When one is sitting on a secret like Operation Das, it is like living with a time bomb that will blow up any minute. Well, what is Operation well, Das? You mean you don't know? Oh, look, I was told to look for a clock shop in Basel that had in the window a man's watch set at New York time. I was told I would be given Operation Das and that I was to transmit it by code to London at once. In the German language, Das is the neuter pronoun. Uh, meaning... Neuter or neutral. I do not understand. Operation Das is the deliberate plan of Germany to brutally and without conscience... Shh, shh, shh. There's someone at the door. Fräulein, I guarantee this watch will keep perfect time. Perfect. I am sure it will. Uh, let me set it for you. Uh, three minutes after six. There. I'm sure it will be satisfactory. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, yes, sir? Here you are. Yes. My identification, State Security Police. You will come with me, please. Oh, why? I have done nothing. It is only a routine examination concerning your foreign exchange license. But I am alone here. I, there is no one to watch the shop. You will come now, Herr Jura. Now. <laughs> Oh, 
For an instant, I thought Herr Jura would faint with terror. His hands, swollen with arthritis, shook uncontrollably. He looked at me, a long, pleading look, as though he was trying to tell me something. Then he turned and followed the policeman out of the shop. When I finally looked at the watch he had given me, I, I saw it was set at 12. 12 o'clock. Danger. This is the room here, Fräulein. Thank you, Frau Melzer. It looks very pleasant. I'm grateful to Herr Jura for recommending you. Ah, that cousin of mine. All he does is worry. Eat and laugh. That is my recipe. <laughs> it's a good one. Ah, uh, you are thin, my child. I'll fatten you up. You <laughs> wait. None of these foolish French <laughs> breakfast. Hot fun kuchen, jam, cheese, eggs. Something to start the day right. I don't say everybody should weigh 200 pounds like me, but young girls should... Frau Meltner, I am tired. I like to lie down a moment. Oh, forgive me. Talking is my hobby. And, Fräulein, if you do use the telephone, make a note, please. A note? For the bill. Oh, I know you young girls, always calling up men. Now, when I was a girl, well... <laughs> The men called you. They besieged me, and there was always enough of me to go around. <laughs> uh, Fräulein, you see, I have no daughters. If, if there is anything, anything I can do for you, just ask. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have your nap. I will see you later. All right. Did you get her to take the room? Of course. She's resting now. What did you find out? Nothing yet. Who is she? Her name is Geza. Baroness Karen Geza. She's traveling on a stateless person permit. Why? Give me time, will you? Don't I always get what you want? We picked up Jura. Good. Where did you take him? Across the border. He's in Germany now. Does he know about Operation Das? I'll beat it out of him if he does. He has arthritis. The least touch and he screams. What's that? Telephone. She's phoning. Pick up the receiver. Quickly. Hold it so we can both hear. Shh, Ila, shh. Keep your hand over the mouthpiece. Hello? Paul Hemmeline, please. Speaking. My name is Geza. Karen Geza. Herr Jura, the watchmaker, gave me your name. He gave me a watch, too. Set at danger. Twelve o'clock? Yes. Meet me in an hour at the Schiefen Ecker Cafe. It's a little bustle at the head of the Greifengasse. How, how will I know you? I am tall and blonde. I will hold the white handkerchief in my left hand, and uh, I wear horn-rimmed glasses. Have you got that? Horn-rimmed glasses? Yeah. A white handkerchief in your left, left hand. Yes. In an hour, then. Yes. Goodbye. They've hung up. Ah, an ingenious device from Melzner. My compliment. Thank you. Who is Paul Hamela? A friend of old Jura's. For weeks I have suspected him of working for the British. He's... Wait a minute. Yes? She has never seen him. He is tall and blonde. Except for the glasses, the description could fit you, Fritz. You mean... Why not? He doesn't know Hamline. She doesn't know you. So I trade places with him? Yeah. He lives at 11 Freistestrasse. If you want to stop him, you'd better hurry. They said in an hour at the Schiefenecke Cafe. Oh, it's risky. Ah, with one blow, I could finish Hamline myself. Now, you pick her up at the cafe and across the border to Germany. And remember... A white handkerchief in your left hand. Hamiline wears glasses. Where can I get horned rimmed glasses at this hour? Take his. <laughs> that is all I know, Herr Hammerline. The state security police came into the clock shop and took you away. Oh, they will probably let him go in the morning. What do you know about Operation Das? Fräulein, please. Even to say the words is dangerous. Oh. We can talk in my car. Let me drive you home. You have a car? 
parked right outside. Weren't we supposed to turn left back there? Left? Yes. Frau Meltzer lives on Missionstrasse. I thought... Fräulein, that... I have lived in Basel all my life. But this road leads to the border station. Believe me, Fräulein, I know Basel like the palm of my hand. But we are coming to the river, to the bridge. Shortcut, that's all. We do not cross a bridge to go to Frau Meltzner's house. We cross this one. I see. What are you doing? I dropped my gloves. Then pick them up. What up? Give me that key. Get away from that door. Roylan, come back. Come back or I shoot. Oh, God, she jumped. Bungler, der flügte Hesel. Before I could stop her, she was out of the car. You should have shot her. Oh, she pretended she dropped her gloves. Before I realized it, she turned off the ignition and taken the key. I was wearing Hamelin's glasses and I couldn't see. Besides, a 20-foot fall into the Rhine from that bridge is better than a bullet. You should have searched. You should have found her. She jumped from the middle of the bridge. She's dead, I tell you. She is dead. <laughs> She'd been in the respirator, Charlie. Almost two hours, Doc. Who found her? Uh, the police. They saw her jump from the bridge, sir. Suicide? Could be. I wonder why. Uh, dames. Well, she's coming round now. Turn off the respirator. Yeah, sure thing, Doc. Where am I? You're safe. Well, where am I? It's all right. You're in the hospital. In Switzerland. Where else? Oh, thank God. Shh, that won't do any good. Please, please, you've got now, to... Now, take it easy, baby. Take you, it easy. You don't understand. Oh, you're all right now. You're safe. Please, telephone. Two, zero, zero, seven. A man named Paul Hamill. And if, if, he, if he answers, tell him where I am. Two, zero, zero, seven. Yes. Paul Hamelin. All right. Uh, and my landlady, Frau Melsner. Seventh three mission strasse. I'll phone immediately. Tell her I'm safe. Tell her not to worry. I don't believe it. To jump twenty feet into the middle of the Rhine and live. Believe what you like. They brought her home from the hospital this morning. Some English doctor phoned last night. She was afraid I'd worry. Is she still in bed? Yes, and eating a hearty lunch. Does she suspect you? No. You're sure? Of course I'm sure. How about Jura? Ah, uh, every time we touch him, he faints. We have learned nothing. Then break him. You've done this before. You cannot make an unconscious man talk. You fool! A half-crippled old man. A slip of a girl. She's in your house. Keep your voice down. She'll hear you. We mustn't panic. But please... Please, get it out of Jura, as he told her. Where is it? We've got to know quickly. Ramel, sir. The doctor is coming any minute. Go out the back way. Yes. I'll keep her in bed as long as I can. I'll go back and work on Jura. Ramel, sir. Coming. Just a minute. That was a delicious lunch, Ramel, sir. <laughs> you are feeding me like a truck oh, driver. Poor Karen. You look so pale. Here. Let me take the tray. There. Now, how do you feel? Just wonderful. I should like to get up tomorrow. Oh, but I feel fine, honestly. Tomorrow you will feel finer. You have had a bad shock. But I'm so much trouble to you. My dear child, having you in the house is... Well, it is nice for me to have a young girl to fuss over. Why are you so good to me? Oh, it is nothing, nothing. Miss 
I love to cook. And when there is only me to eat it, I get fat. And when I get fat, I... Oh, that must be the doctor. Oh, throw Meltzer my bed jacket, quick, the blue one. Yeah. And Mike Holm, and the perfume, please. Oh, he's only a doctor. Besides, Karen, you look delicious. <laughs> So that's my story. Battalion Surgeon, 5th Lancashire Regiment. Charlie and I escaped out of Germany. The Swiss police interned us for the duration. You are a prisoner? On parole. The Swiss are very jealous of their neutrality. I'm free to move around. Glad to work at the hospital. It's better than sitting in a cell somewhere. It should be easy to get out of Basel. In return for being allowed to move around and work, I promised I wouldn't try. I see. Um, may I ask you a personal question? What kind of a question? Did you, uh, well, why would a woman like you jump off a bridge? Dr. St. George, I have known sadness, yes. My husband was murdered by the Nazis. Our palace in Vienna was sacked. But I still believe in the future. Believe me, I, I did not try to commit suicide. And that is... All I will tell you. I'm very glad. Now I have a prescription. Oh, no. Not more medicine, please. No. Dinner with me tonight at the casino. Doctor's orders? Correct. <laughs> then I shall be obedient. I'll call for you at seven. Uh, sure you feel strong enough? I feel wonderful. And I'll be ready. Till seven, then. Goodbye, doctor. Two. Zero. Zero. Seven. Please, God, let him answer. Let him be in this time. Please. Aren't you enjoying yourself? Well, of course I am. You seem so preoccupied. I'm sorry. More champagne. Thank you. I have a toast. To you for jumping into my life. Uh, may I change it? Of course. To a brave old man who was afraid. Who? He ran a watch shop. Did he give you that watch? Yes. And every time I look at it, I wonder what happened to him. <laughs> Herr Jura, this is so foolish. We know a microfilm on operation does was in your possession until three days ago. Now. Where is it? I, I don't know. All right, since you insist. No, no, please. Don't touch me again. Where is it? No. I, I'll tell. I'll tell. Where is it? It's in her watch. It's concealed in the case of a watch I gave her in the shop when you picked me up. Now leave me alone. Please, please, please leave me alone. What kind of a watch? A wristwatch. A man's wrist watch. <laughs> now one more question, Herr Jura. <laughs> Hamelin, the man in the cell with you. Did you help him to escape? Where would he go? Oh, no, I, I, I... Did you tell him about the watch? <laughs> oh, be quiet, be quiet, I said. Bromelzner? You are talked. Yes. A microfilm on operation does is concealed in the wristwatch the girl is wearing. A man's wristwatch, get it? She's out. Where? The casino. Listen, get Otto and Hans. Meet me at the casino in 30 minutes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Doctor, it's, it's getting late. Would you like to leave? I'm afraid I'm not in the mood for dancing in champagne. I wish you'd tell me what's bothering you. I wish I could. Believe me, I wish I could. What is it? That man. The tall, fair one. He, he's the one who tried to kidnap me. Kidnap you? Yes. The Gestapo. Karen. And the one with him is the man who arrested Herr Jura in the watchmaker shop. Are they after you? Yes. Can I help? If only we had a car. If only we could make a dash for it. Waitress, will you bring me the telephone, please? What are you going to do? Oh, trust me, will you? You don't understand. These men are, are insane. They are desperate. They kill and they murder. They stop at nothing. Steady. Here is your telephone, sir. Just a moment, sir, till I plug it in. Go ahead, sir. Not the police. No. Then who? You want a car, don't you? Hello? Dr. St. George here. I'm at the casino. Yes. I want an ambulance in a hurry. Send Charlie with it. Yes. Uh, tell him the bases are loaded. Uh, oh, never mind. Just tell him to hurry. How long will it take? About ten minutes. I say, Karen, is that Frau Melzner? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Frau Melzner isn't the casino type. What do we do when the ambulance arrives? First, we have some more champagne. Nobody can hurt you in a crowded nightclub. When the ambulance arrives, believe me with Charlie on the side and we'll know when it arrives. We get up and very casually walk to the door. Then what? Wherever you want to go. Home. Is that best? Frau Meltner is a completely trustworthy. You have your key? Yes. Good night, Doctor, and thank you. Thank you more than I can say. I'll telephone in the morning. Uh, and say good night to Charlie for me. I will. And thank you again for everything. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing at all. Good night. From Elsner, are you asleep? From Elsner, are you asleep? Hello? Is, is there a Baroness Karen Gator there? Speaking. This is Paul Hammerlein. What? Listen, I've been hurt. They captured me, but I got away. I've been trying to call you for half an hour. Listen, Operation Das is in the watch. In the watch here, Jura gave you in the shop. The watch? I found out that Frau Nelson... Uh, that she... she... Uh, hello. 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 I hurried to my room. With trembling fingers, I opened the watch. It was all there, on microfilm, all of Operation Dust. I had won. I had found it. In the morning, I would send it to London. I hid the watch under my mattress and tried to sleep. My mind was in turmoil. Herjura was dead. Paul Hamline was... Where? I didn't know. Finally, I fell asleep. Tortured, restless sleep. It was three in the morning when I awoke with a start. Is... Is somebody there? Who is it? From Melsa? Who is it? Who is it? He's in here, Fritz. In bed. From Melsner, are you deliberately trying to frighten Keep me out quiet. of it? Keep quiet. What, Fritz? So they didn't take her out to the hospital. The watch, Baroness. Give it to me. I know you've got it. Now, where is it? This man is... is... But this time without Paul Hamelin's glasses, and I shoot very straight, Baroness. Please keep still. No, Fritz, let me. Curling irons. They get hot very quickly. Now, listen, you little fool. We're in a hurry. Where uh, is it? I should have known when you said that the Nordic blood overwhelmed... Shut your mouth! Ah! I have wanted to do that for five days. Keep her covered, Fritz. These curling irons get hot, Baroness. Very hot. They will bring welts on that lovely skin like rats in a dirt road. Hold her, Fritz. Yes, now, Miss. Keep your hands off me. Let go. Where is it, Baroness? Uh, no? The curling irons are very hot. 
It's in the drawer. In the bottom drawer under my clothes. Get it, Fritz. Don't worry, she won't move. Yes. She's lying. Under the clothes. No. I believe the Baroness wishes to play games. Hold her. I'm not fooling, Baroness. I want that watch. I want it now, this second. I, my purse, under the bed. I swear it's in my purse. If you are lying this time, Baroness. No, no, no. I swear it's in my purse. Look under the bed, Fritz. Yes. Let's everybody stand nice and still. You or Fritzy make a move for our Melsner. Charlie, Charlie, thank God. Come to me, come. The curling irons, Frau Melsner, put them down. You want it in the stomach or the head? Now, get up, Karen, and get a coat. I got the ambulance outside. Yes, yes, sir. We picked up a guy named Hammerline tonight, Fritzy. I found him in a phone booth, just about dead. He told me some of the things you'd done to him. Come here. Uh, after all, we are at war. Your country and mine. Yeah, that's right. Now stand right in front of me. Hurry, Karen. Yes. Remember this, will you, Fritzy? <laughs> Get over this apartment. 300 francs a month. Uh, ask Charlie. He got it for me. <laughs> well, this girl said she, she's, uh... What's the matter? You don't like it? Oh, it's wonderful. And so are you, both of you. Karen, what about Operation Das? I transmitted the complete plans by code to Allied Intelligence in London. Then I presented the microfilm to the Swiss government. I don't get it. Well, what's, what's Das mean? Das means neuter. Neither masculine nor feminine. Neuter. In the middle. Or neutral, like Switzerland. Operation DOS was the complete and detailed plans for a German attack on Switzerland. Invasion, everything. But everybody knows that Switzerland is neutral. Charlie, you are a very naive man. You know, I wonder when folks are going to figure Americans right. Oh, what do you mean, Charlie? Americans hate war, Doc. They hate killing people. But whoever pulls Uncle Sam's beard once too often gets the hell beat out of him. You have just heard Ilona Massey in Top Secret, a transcribed series brought to you each week at this time by NBC. Here is Miss Massey to give you a clue to next week's assignment. Next week, the story of a mission and a poison pin. A corsage that meant death. A baron who played polo and a Marcati 22 whose four wheels spun for fortune. It is a story that has been until now top secret. <laughs> Top Secret is directed and produced by Harry W. Junkin. Tonight's script was by Alan Sloan. Featured with Miss Massey were Ronald Long as the doctor and Ruth York as Frau Meltzner. Other players were Theo Gertz, Peter Capel, Earl Hammond, and Andrew Dugan. The music was composed and conducted by Dr. Roy Shields. This is Fred Collins speaking. One of the best ways to ensure your own future and to ensure a more secure future for America is through the purchase of United States savings bonds. Take It or Leave It provides gay entertainment for you next on NBC.